This week on The Aviators, ever wondered how to do a helicopter pre-flight? We find out as we look at the TH-57 Sea Ranger. Sarah shows us Mitsubishi's contribution to the general aviation turboprop market, the MU-2. And we go inside the Wisconsin Air National Guard as they do a flyover at Road America. The singing of the national anthem is an important part of marking the beginning of air shows and sporting events across the country. For air shows, the anthem is usually marked by a skydiver bringing in the flag with their landing on target ideally coming at the last moment. For outdoor events like races held at Elkhart Lake's Road America, a formation flyby is the perfect exclamation point at the end of the anthem. But how much work goes into making that 5 to 10 second flyby happen right on cue? To find out, we joined the 115th wing of the Wisconsin Air National Guard as they conducted a flyby for a NASCAR nationwide series race at Road America. Three, two, one, hack. 1125 Badger Flight, welcome. 2B2TI, briefing will be unclassified. I actually haven't done a, a led a flyby before. This will be the first one that I've led. I have uh, flown in a couple flybys where I've been on the wing. Leading the four-ship flyby will be Captain Mike Koob. Ready? So as a little kid, I always had an interest in flying. Built radio control airplanes through grade school, started flying with a whole series of World War II Vietnam vet uh, aviators. Got a real big interest for military aviation and then decided to pursue that So I got older. What's neat about the Air National Guard too is I can currently work with SkyWest Airlines. So I'm a pilot with the airline in the civilian world and I have the opportunity to fly F-16s in the military on the side as well. So dual role and that's, uh, that's what's really unique about the Air National Guard and serving in that capacity. The Air National Guard is one of two reserve components of the U.S. Air Force. Operated by each state as part of their National Guard, Air Guard units across the United States operate nearly all of the aircraft of the regular U.S. Air Force, from transport aircraft to the B-2 stealth bomber. Well, the Air National Guard, it's uh, kind of a unique organization where we have a dual state and federal mission. For the federal mission, we obviously do homeland defense as one of our primary missions in the Air National Guard, especially when you talk about F-16s and the fighters, F-15s in the Air National Guard. The homeland defense mission obviously is pretty important to us since 2001, but even before that, the Air National Guard was poised with alert sites around the country protecting our borders. So that's a very unique federal mission that we do. In addition, we deploy whenever we're tasked overseas contingency operations, Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places like that. Statewide, what we do is we offer our unique skills and services, and as well as equipment, to people like the governor, for, for instance, search and rescue. While Captain Koob is a part-time member and came to the Air Guard originally as a civilian, there are full-time members of the Air National Guard and also individuals who have moved to the Air Guard from the regular Air Force. I am a former active duty person. I was in the active duty for 12 years. Uh, four years ago, I decided to make the transition to the Air National Guard. And a lot of it had to do with family, but a lot of it had to do with the tremendous respect I had for the Air National Guard. Flow out of the airspace towards the racetrack, which would be about a 090 from steer point. For today's mission, Captain Koob's four-ship will be doing more than simply flying over a racetrack. In fact, the flyover is a secondary objective. Their primary mission will be conducting air-to-air -air engagement or dogfight training. So quarter after one, what we'll do is we'll take off with our four-ship. We'll go out to the airspace and practice a training mission today. It'll be 2v2, two two, so two airplanes simulating red air. Uh, that is uh, enemy type tactic and then two air airplanes simulating blue air. So myself and number two will be the blue air fighters and we'll go out there and we'll uh, fight a 2v2 two two uh, type intercept game plan. So we'll complete that mission. That'll take about an hour. After that mission, we'll head up uh, north and a little bit east there to the, uh, to the flyby location and do the uh, flyby. 
While the flyover is a secondary objective, the Badgers still view it as a very serious mission objective. To assist with timing on the ground, Major Ben Girds is at Road America. Having someone on the ground at every flyby is imperative in that we have a time that we know we need to fly over. If that changes drastically due to TV schedule or the national anthem start time, it's going to be a very ill-timed flyby if it's up to a couple minutes off. So definitely important to have someone there with, on the ground with radio contact. An F-16 pilot himself, Major Gerds volunteered to be the man on the ground to coordinate the flyby. I've done multiple flybys in the past for the Green Bay Packers, uh, Badgers football, and other uh, events. Uh, what we do is uh, we take turns being on the ground or in the air for these events. Flying is always fun. I'm never going to pass up a flight, but uh, it's a great opportunity to be here on the ground at Elkhart Lake. Awesome facility, and it's been very fun to, to look around. Once the mission is fully briefed, Captain Koob's Badger flight step into their jets and prepare to take off. It's a huge honor to have the opportunity to fly a $30 million something airplane in, in my 20s. Uh, this opportunity is, uh, is fantastic. But also today when we taxi out, knowing that the crew chief, you put all that time into this airplane, making it airworthy, kind of releases you the keys to the jet for uh, our hour and a half sortie today. The feeling's a lot like uh, maybe when the first time dad lets you borrow the, the family car, you know, and take it out. Every time you get the chance to go fly a $30 million taxpayer airplane, it's, it's pretty awesome. As the four aircraft take off and the time on target is set, any changes come down to Major Gerds to communicate. Getting the exact timing of the flyby down is a careful balance. One of the things that makes it really hard to hit the exact time right at that exact moment is when the song starts, or if it starts early or starts late, that needs to be communicated to these guys. Also, we like to set up our system in the jet to have us there 15 seconds late, and then we make up the extra time by using afterburner as we fly over. We can't leave here an afterburner the whole time or we'd be supersonic when we went over the top of the uh, show center, which would be bad. So those are a couple of the factors that go into it. One of the ways that I can help these guys on the ground is by actually doing the mental calculations, converting local time into Zulu time. When the song starts late or early, I'll do the calculations, uh, tell them exactly what time to punch into their system in the jet to be overhead so that they don't have to do that calculation while they're flying out there at four or 500 miles an hour with three other guys three feet off their wing. As the anthem starts, Major Gerds gives a quick time update to the Badger flight. EOT 1934-22 in your system. The main straightaway at Road America is more than a mile long, with spectators spread out the entire length. Somebody along that mile is going to see the flyover either too early or too late. As the jets come inbound, the anthem is going a little quicker than expected, and it appears that the Badger flight will be off by a few seconds. While they appear to be a few seconds behind, the four ship hit their mark at exactly their time and target, and for the 115th, this was a mission accomplished. For Captain Koob and Major Gerds, the few seconds off in timing does not diminish the purpose of them being there. The flyover itself is a witness to, to those. As you listen to the anthem and you think of, uh, you think of the War of 1812, right, when Francis Scott Key is sitting there and he's watching the, some of the earliest Americans decide that it's worth fighting for, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, the things that we hold dear as Americans. And these early Americans stand up to fight. And we still have that, and it's so, so alive in our society today, I think. We can, we can debate the reasons, uh, the pros and cons, or our, our current involvement with wars all over, and we can debate that. But I'd say when, when we fly over, it's a witness that we still have that spirit alive. And it's not, it's not so much me, it's the whole team that goes into to doing this. It's all the people who put these jets, get them ready for us. It's all the taxpayers who, who work hard, give their paychecks to Uncle Sam, so we have this opportunity to keep a good fleet of airplanes ready uh, for any involvement that we need worldwide. 